Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn concept and significance of stress strain curve. To understand concept of load elongation curve or stress strain curve, let us take example of three different yarns. Yarn A with tenacity of 25 grams per tex and breaking extension of 12 percentage. Yarn B again with same parameters that is tenacity 25 grams per tex and breaking extension 12 percent. And yarn C again with same parameters that is tenacity 25 grams per tex and breaking extension 12 percentage. Now, is it possible to decide end application just by using the data which is given to us? To give answer to this question, let us study what exactly is happening when we apply load on these three yarns. This is yarn A. Its behavior right from the zero load till the breaking point. This is yarn B. Again from zero load to the breaking point. And this may be yarn C. Now looking at these three curves, is it possible to use these three yarns for same application? Obviously, the answer is no. If let us assume we want to extend the material up to this point. If I want to extend material up to this point, I require this much load for A yarn. So, E is constant. I want E extension and I have to apply L1 load on yarn A to extend it to point E, elongation E. If I want to extend yarn C to point E, then I require the load. Let us consider this load as L2. Similarly, if I want to extend yarn B up to the elongation E, then I may have to apply the load. Let us call this as L3. Now here, if my intention is to increase the elongation to extend the material till this point till elongation E then I have to apply different load on all the three materials L1 for A, L2 for C, well L3 for B and if you just try to relate these it will be something like this L2 is less than L1 and L1 is less than L3. What does it mean? Though these three yarns, they are showing final tenacity and breaking extension values same, the inherent behavior of these material is quite different. I can say that this material or the yarn C is extensible during initial phases. Comparatively, yarn B is showing lower extensibility in initial stages. And based on therefore, this inherent characteristics of the material, I can decide its end application. Based on the behavior of the material, textile material, towards application of load, we have to decide its end application and hence just by knowing the values of tenacity and breaking extension is not enough. We must know what is called as actual behavior of the material when we apply load on the specimen and hence it is very essential to study load elongation curve or more appropriately it is stress strain curve of the material. Before we directly start studying 
लोड इलोंगेशन कर्व और स्ट्रेस ट्रेन कर्व ऑफ टेक्सटाइल मटेरियल्स लेटर स्टडी वॉट आर द बेसिक टाइप्स ऑफ मटेरियल्स एंड वॉट इज नेचर ऑफ द लोड इलोंगेशन कर्व फॉर हंड्रेड परसेंट इलास्टिक मटेरियल्स द लोड इलोंगेशन कर्व इज अ डायगोनल स्ट्रेट लाइन बिकॉज फॉर एन इलास्टिक मटेरियल If you apply load, say for example, you have applied 100 gram load to an elastic material, and it is extending through one centimeter. If you keep this 100 gram for say five minutes, then there won't be any change in the elongation. It will remain one centimeter only. While if you increase the load to 200 gram, you will get extension. which has been increased by another 1 cm if you increase the load to 300 grams again there will be increase in the elongation proportionately and hence we get a straight line for 100% elastic material one of the important characteristic is they won't show time dependent elasticity thus 100% elastic materials obey hooke's law stress is proportional to strain and there is no time dependent extension for 100% elastic materials unlike 100% elastic materials let us assume this is a sample 100% plastic material if you apply say 100 gram load the material extends say by 1 cm which is immediate extension as soon as you apply load on the sample it extends and that is known as immediate extension now unlike 100% elastic materials if you keep this 100 gram load for more period say for example 15 minutes you are going to keep this load then based on plasticity of the material the material will go on extending something like this right so 100% plastic materials they show time dependent extension with same load if you keep it for more period the material will go on extending and a stage will come with the same load the material will break this is as far as 100% plastic materials are concerned unlike 100% plastic or 100% elastic materials textile fibers are visco elastic in nature they have combination of both elastic as well as viscous portion and therefore for certain region especially initial portion these fibers they show straight line which is very similar to 100% elastic material then after based on the plasticity in the material it bends towards x axis and a stage will come when the material breaks it cannot withstand the load applied load and it breaks which is breaking point let us start studying behavior of textile materials towards application of load here in this graph i have shown two different materials viscose and nylon if i ask you to compare these two materials for the strength your answer definitely will be viscose is stronger than nylon but practically nylon is stronger than viscose right in actual the condition may be something like this viscose may be 250 denier while nylon has 30 denier so unless and until you know fineness of material it is not possible to do comparison for their strength unless and until you know initial length of the specimen it is not possible to compare the material for extensibility and hence it is more appropriate to convert this load elongation curve into what is called as stress strain curve 
the load has to be converted into stress while elongation has to be converted into strain or extension now when you convert these two curves into stress strain curve then the condition has been exactly reversed here in this case it is necessary to consider fineness of the material when you do comparison if you say 250 denier viscose is stronger than 30 denier then you are correct but if you say viscose is stronger than nylon you may go wrong but unlike this load elongation curve if you refer stress strain curve it is not necessary to consider fineness of the material it is not necessary to consider initial length of the specimen directly you can compare different materials for behavior towards application of load irrespective of the fineness of material you can say that nylon is stronger than viscose nylon is more extensible than viscose hence behavior of textile fibers towards application of load is generally expressed in terms of stress strain curve rather than load elongation curve apart from broad behavior of the material towards application of load the stress strain curve gives us other important information in terms of various parameters such as initial young's modulus yield point work of rupture etc when it comes to textile fibers those are viscoelastic in nature so the textile fibers they have both elastic as well as plastic region elastic portion responds during initial stages of application of load and hence based on elastic region when you apply load on the specimen the fiber extends and the initial portion will be a straight line indicating 100% elasticity in the material to understand practical application of this region let us consider three examples let us assume this is sample a this is sample b and this is sample c right all the three samples they are in the elastic zone if you apply load to the sample and if you release the load it will go back to their original position but then actual behavior of these three materials is quite different if you want to extend sample c in initial portion then you need to apply lower force higher load is required to be applied for sample b and sample a needs still more load and this load which is required to extend the material can be expressed in terms of what is called as young's modulus for 100% elastic materials we use the term young's modulus when it comes to textile materials they behave like elastic only for initial portion and hence the term young's modulus has been modified as initial young's modulus which is tangent of the angle between the initial part of the curve and x axis so for sample a this is theta that is angle between the initial portion of the curve and x axis and tan of the theta is known as 
initial Young's modulus, right? Higher value of tan theta indicate higher resistance towards extensibility. It means amongst the three samples, A is less extensible while C is more extensible. This is practical significance of initial Young's modulus. The next important parameter which we get is yield point. After the 100% elastic portion gets over, if you increase load then the curve starts bending towards x axis because of presence of viscous material and a stage will come when it breaks. In any stress strain curve or load elongation curve, a point up to which specimen behaves like 100% elastic is known as yield point. Corresponding stress is known as yield stress while corresponding strain is known as yield strain. This is also called as elastic limit because up to this point material behaves like 100% elastic. And for any unknown material, if you have stress strength curve, then to find out its elastic limit, you can join the starting and end point of the curve. After you draw this line, Secondly, you have to draw a line parallel to this line and yield point is a point where this line touches the curve. Higher position of yield point indicate more elastic portion, more elastic zone in the material. The stress corresponding to the breaking point is known as tenacity while the strain expressed in percentage at breaking point is known as breaking extension. So additionally stress strain curve gives us tenacity as well as breaking extension. Next important information we could obtain from a load elongation curve is work of rupture. For a stress strain curve, this is known as specific work of rupture. Work of rupture is defined as energy required to break the sample. It denotes toughness of the material and it can be measured by measuring area under the curve. Higher area under the curve indicate tougher material. To compare toughness of different materials, we use a term that is specific work of rupture wherein we have to include linear density and initial length which may be variable while you express work of rupture. So different materials can be compared for their toughness using specific work of rupture. Work factor is another way to express toughness of the material. For the materials which obeys Hooke's law right from starting point till breaking point, they show work factor of half. Because work factor is ratio of work of rupture and breaking stress and breaking strain. So this ratio comes to half and therefore for such materials we get work of rupture equals to half. While for the material which are concave towards strain axis are considered as tougher materials which shows work factor greater than half. While the material having the shape concave towards stress axis they shows work factor less than half and considered as less tough materials. 
so these are different parameters which we could obtain to judge actual behavior of the material during its usage as a technologist we have to refer different types of fibers and these textile fibers they differ mainly in terms of molecular structure and because of change in molecular structure change in arrangement of molecular chains their behavior towards application of load is different the figure shows stress strain diagram of different textile fibers just to understand let us consider two fibers here let us take example of this silk fiber and secondly we will take example of wool fiber right now if you consider these two fibers at a glance you can say that as far as initial young's modulus of silk fiber is concerned it is higher than wool so the extensibility of silk fiber is quite less than wool wool, wool is more extensible than silk secondly yield point of the silk fiber is at higher level than wool fiber this shows silk behaves like 100% elastic even at higher loads compared to wool as far as breaking extension is concerned wool shows more breaking extension than silk tenacity of silk fiber is significantly higher than wool fiber as far as toughness of these two fibers is concerned area under the curve will be higher for silk and silk is therefore tougher than wool fiber this is how you can compare different fibers for their behavior towards application of load just by referring the stress strain curve and then you can predict end application from a given fiber this is technical significance of stress strain curve thank you